Hello, good people. We are back with Truth Be Told, and this is Tasneem and Saria Grace, and my comrade, my truth teller in arms, Andrea Blackman. Hey, Tasneem. Welcome back, everyone. Hello, hello. We're excited for this episode. We are excited because yeah. occasionally we turn the mirror toward ourselves. And this episode is introspective. It's very introspective and, and self-critical in a healthy way. In a healthy way. In yeah. a growth way, a reflective kind of way. Yeah. And keeping ourselves um, accountable mm-hmm. for who we say we are and want to be. Very true. Right? Very okay. true. So our topic today. Our topic today is about the Jedi mind trick and how we are aware That there is a great seduction taking place. We are being invited to think about certain things and to consider certain truths and to ignore other things. Some things we pay attention to Mm -hmm. and then others we kind of somehow put in the back and it lies dormant. Or dead. Or dead to us, right? And so while we're walking around and all over social media talking about brown suits, exposed shoulders, shoulders, and who showed up at what party and how Mm -hmm. many beautiful Nike contracts and who marched in the HBCU representation of the NBA All-Star Game, Mm. the world is still crumbling. The world is still crumbling. And all those things are still happening at the same time, right? They are. There's this interesting entertainment celebrity-driven world and awareness. And at the same time, there's some other things we need to be paying attention to. And I hope we can uncover some of those attention grabbers and the things that we deny our attention to we don't give our attention to like how many of us are thinking on a day-to-day basis about how many children are still being held in detention centers right now i didn't see that in my feed how many of us are talking about what's going on in georgia voter suppression or all over the country right now no what was in your feed this morning the number one thing in your news feed good question admittedly i did not check Okay. That shows you how dedicated I am. Actually, I think media. that shows how, how, how wise you are. Oh, a suggestion <laughs> of do. balance. I do. A suggestion of balance. But earlier this week, it was International Women's Day. And so I saw a lot of posts about that. And I think that's healthy and beautiful. Pushes us outside of our ethnocentric views. That when you say women, you only imagine women who have American accents. You don't think of women globally. globally. And so I love that. Yes. But I do think we are heavily driven by celebrity culture. Let's talk about it. Let's do it. Heavily and again, driven. this is no attack on anyone who is like pop culture guru of the no. world. This is us. We're saying there's a spectrum. There has to be. And there has to be balance. And there has to be truth. Mm-hmm. In all things. In all things. In all things. Let's dig so if I'm going to talk about Cardi B's nails and her new Barbie doll or Cardi doll. I think I should also be able to speak with some amount of curiosity and awareness about what's happening in Myanmar. What's going on? Right. Let's talk about it. But you know what was in my feed when I checked yesterday? What? And I didn't even remember that this was happening. Meghan Markle. And it was like a cryptic kind of message in Facebook. I think it said something like, this is a horrible paraphrase. So this much is true. Anti-blackness is everywhere. Something like that. As if. Oh, wait a minute. It's 2021. I said I wasn't going to do that this year. Mm. Right. Okay. Sorry. Go back. I digress. Anti-blackness. As if. (laughs) (laughs) I lied last year when I said I was was going to be gentle. Remember, I said I wasn't going to be shocked. Yeah. You lied. lied. I'm like, well, we knew anti-blackness was global, right? As if. It's planetary. As if this shock about the empire I can I just say I'm bewildered by this. I don't know the connection of people who have been colonial subjects of Britain being so enamored by this idea of the royal family. They would not hire you to pull their stagecoach. But yet we have created complete manifestos on our timeline of how shocked we are that we as a we, the collective world we, that the great empire still is dealing with the same amount of racism that we are here in this Western world. They're imperialists! As if (laughs) if it ended, right? Or can we, I know you're going to get into the level of melanin that I think infuses this story. I agree. Go for it. And for sure, you know, please hear us. You know, for Andrea and I, the truth is not specific to Meghan Markle or Prince Harry. It's not about the relationship 
Not at all. We don't care. We celebrate love wherever it, it exists. Like we're not trying to decode the royals and their romance and no. Tyler Perry offering them security. Because we both watch Bridgerton. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did, my grace. Um, <laughs> Like we said, it's a spectrum. <laughs> and we said it's our work, too, that we're doing. So Very true. Yeah. And I love a good scone. Let me just say that. <laughs> but um, I will say that it raised some questions for me. Yeah. How and not that? coming from straight hateration. I think coming from the lens of are we allowing ourselves to be, to analyze the news that is given to us to digest and so that's the Jedi mind trick. We're going to tell you what to think about. And seduce you with these, mm-hmm. you called them soft stories. Soft, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As, as a former journalist, that's the language in the field. You got the hard news and you got the soft news. So we allow the seduction of the soft stories. And Agreed. So, Megan, Agreed. So we have Megan Markle and the big news, I suppose, for a lot of people was her sharing the racism that is in the firm as in the royal family and how they were no longer going to have security despite all the threats to their lives. Um, they gave up titles. They gave up money. I don't. I think they're still doing pretty okay. And of course, this is an Oprah interview. Of course. When I love that question she asked. So this is bad. When she said, were you silent or were you silenced? Ah. Somebody pull up a distinction. Somebody. <laughs> As Oprah can. And what did Megan say? <laughs> the latter. <laughs> I was like, okay. I have to admit, I'm probably the only person uh-huh. in the world who hadn't watched the Okay, interview. admittedly, I didn't either, but okay. the New York Times has a two-minute clip. <laughs> okay, that so, that that's, so again, that's it. it speaks to where I'm putting my time. What stories, are, what stories am I allowing to be fed into my spirit, into my what ignites me and what yes. fuels me day to day? I love that. And that just hasn't been one of them. Not Because I'm not week. shocked about it. No, no. So when we look at the elements that perhaps didn't come up in the interview, and again, like Andrea and myself, we did not watch the interview. We were doing other things. So people are going to uh, say, do we have the right to talk about it? It's sure our, we do. Because it's our podcast. Yes, one. and it's our truth. <laughs> and it's our truth. Mm-hmm. Go for it, Ted. Yeah. You don't have to see the whole color purple to know it's an awesome movie. <laughs> to know that there's a Miss Celia. Hello. Go on. So, so this idea, I think there's the story of Meghan Markle and the story, in, you know, of the British Empire and the royal family, I think speaks to there are other stories embedded in that story that deserve our attention. So I'm just going to suggest a few as suggested by, say, The Guardian which comes out of the UK that, and they've had these awesome writers on their website. If you're looking for stories that sort of poke holes in pop culture reporting, that give you a different way to look at some things. I think the guardian should I be agree. on the list. I, definitely I just agree. like, I like the reporting, I do too. but they're talking about how perhaps what Meghan Markle is exposing is the treatment of black women in Britain that has been experienced since the beginning of time? Since the beginning of time. Correct. So there's black women all over the world who are saying, baby, did you think they was going to accept your baby? Is this a joke? She probably did. And she herself brought up colorism, right? She did. They wondered how dark their baby, mm-hmm. or the firm, wondered how dark their child, whose name is Archie, I believe, mm-hmm. would be. I think the other story is, in that story, is the fact that There's a lot of different terms Megan is sort of identified with. Some people say she's a biracial black woman. Some people just say she's a black woman. Some people call her multiracial. But I think we do know she is a lighter hued woman of color. And I often wonder, have we heard her identify herself as anything other than I just don't follow her. I don't don't know. know. So I don't know. I don't know. I won't speak to it. Yes. But just, you know, what would we speak about if she were, say, the color of pecans? Hmm. If she were butterscotch brown. Pecan brown. Gingerbread brown. Mocha brown. Mm, almond brown. Chocolate chip cookie dough brown. Get it. Caramel macchiato brown. If she was browner, it would... Would it still be as prevalent in the news as it is? Or would it be... Would there have even been a wedding? Oh, my. Wow. I think that's also part of the story. So we're spoon fed this idea of a great brand wedding and she's amazing and she has on these fabulous clothes, I will say. Wow. I mean, she's fab. She's fab. She's, you know, yeah. all those things, not taking anything from her. But I'm saying that we're talking about stories under stories under stories that sometimes we don't see. And that's the truth that we're seeking. Mm-hmm. And is there another part of the story that has been deliberately left out or just kind of 
swept under the rug for another hundred years of, of or is the work and the truth of colorism too hard for most people to deal with mm. as me because we've become so comfortable with with not speaking about colorism you know we can talk about melanin melanin poppin sure we can create memes for it mm-hmm. but if we talk about the root of colorism mm. and its impact and what that looks like under the guise of supremacy mm-hmm. we don't want to go there and it's I think loaded. that's a story that's what it is. It's loaded. Mm-hmm. It's just food for thought. Soft, seduced news story. Sure. Yeah. Yep. We want to talk about Megan's hurt and her suicidal thoughts. But there's other things to talk about, too. There. And we are not negating that any of that is not important. It's her truth. Mm-hmm. But what we are offering our listeners is their more to the story. Mm-hmm. And how are we spending our time being seduced by certain elements of the news, of pop culture, when we are completely blind to what's going on? Very true. I.E. Georgia. I.E. Georgia. Now, was Georgia in your news feed? Georgia isn't. Georgia, I, I haven't. I'm, I'm like you. I didn't pay any attention to my news feed today. Okay. Yeah, awesome. I didn't. I didn't. Awesome. I got a busy day. Maybe she had a and life outside I of her phone. I have a life outside of my phone. <laughs> Believe it or not, outside of my nice. news feed anyway. Nice. And so, but I do want to talk about it. We all fangirls and we all love Stacey Abrams and the work that the entire state of Georgia has done. Oh, my God. Because without the Georgia, we know where we would be in this election year. Mm-hmm. And we know those black and brown women, those black women have rocked the entire state of Georgia. Indeed. Our country. Indeed. Right? Fits Power. Are up. Power fits are up. Beyond. And we know I'm a fangirl. But can I just say, mm-hmm. while we are celebrating and we're talking about the Nobel Peace Prize, and we're talking about all the things that these wonderful black women have done, somehow we are forgetting what is still going on and all that is happening in Georgia and in 43 other states around the country, a voter suppression. Mm -hmm. And how we think because we won in election, we, the collective we, Mm -hmm. the country won in election. Let's sit back. Let's sit back and do it. And the pendulum, we saw this. Post Obama, we saw this post Clinton. Mm-hmm. You know, you play a saxophone for folks, and somehow we have miraculously erased 500 years of oppression. And I think we are in the same place because he did. Clinton played his saxophone on the Arsenio Hall show, and somehow people became and said, "He now he's our first black president." I remember that. And so here we are now in Georgia, and with its victory in the country, whoever you voted for, that's not what this is about. But the fact that we have an entire system that is playing while we're sitting back creating these memes of what is going on in the world. And we're talking about Georgia, and we're talking about 100... I think they reached, what, they knocked on 1 million doors. Mm -hmm. Amazing work that they did. But Georgia legislators and activists are still fighting right now. Many of us don't know that Georgia, what's going on there in day 25, Mm. of a group of people who have locked themselves in protest, chained to the doors, because there's a new battle on the front, a Mm. battle for voter suppression to create a new form of Jim Crow that we are missing Mm -hmm. because somehow we are following some other news, some other thing. Mm -hmm. And we are, again, 50, how many states? 43 states are getting ready to lose a lot of voting rights. And we talk about voter suppression and we're talking about the idea of changing the times of voting polls. And if we do this, most people who are BIPOC are unable to take off of work. So now we've erased how many people who are going to be eligible for vote. Uh, We talk about making voting polls open on Sundays from 11 to 1 Mm -hmm. when most BIPOC people are in places of worship. Yes. And so now you are making things complicated Mm -hmm. and sometimes we may say it's too complicated, so I'm not going to vote. And we have to go beyond that one vote. And I just want us to be aware of all these things that are going on. That needs to be in our feed of what's going on. This idea of protecting our power and protecting these rights. And 43 states have introduced more than 250 bills with restricting voting provisions. That is all around the country. So while Mm -hmm. we're celebrating with our Chucks, our Taylors, and our Nobel Peace Prizes, the country is still on fire. Hmm. I wonder if that's part of the suppression, too, to sort of lull our sense of urgency and activism into a stupor with premature celebration. Wow. Like, so let's feed them this idea that we're done, that we're post-racial, that we've achieved everything. Right. So then they'll sit back with their... Lemonade. And you're thinking that this is a deliberate act. I'm, I'm questioning. The stupor. Yes. Creating elements of the stupor is mm-hmm. deliberate. Of course it is. I think it's the blue I, and I, red pill. I, I definitely agree with mm-hmm. you. 
Interesting. What's, mm. what's next in our news? Well, one of the things that I think we mentioned earlier that has been in our feed is the excitement that people have been experiencing around the idea of receiving stimulus checks. Yes. And imagining how we're going to spend that extra money. We've also been thinking about the blessing of having student loans forgiven. And so for many people who are tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, that's something that's very exciting. You mentioned many memes about them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to get this money. I'm going to get this money. And one of the things that I've recognized, and if I just pay attention to the New York Times, and I love, I still love the New York Times. I do too. I'm with you. I just love the New York Times. And I, I love their sort of rolling list of what we should be paying attention to. So I consider them to be a news outlet that is aware of the Jedi mind trick. And that is what's happening in Myanmar. I can guarantee you, I don't know, at least if I had to pull out my phone and call my five people I spoke to last, how many of them would know what's going on there? Yeah. Or where Myanmar is. Or so, that it used to be oh, Burma. Yeah. Or it was British occupied. I mean, and it's I, another story of a country that is embroiled in genocidal acts because I mean, of a colonial past that pitted people against each other. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> But we're so far. Go on. Go on. So the Rohingya Mm -hmm. being called by the United Nations, the most oppressed group in the world. Are we talking about that? No, we're not. How there's a coup that started in the beginning of February. And this is on the front page of of newspapers everywhere if we're paying attention. Yes. If we are paying attention. But we glance over it. We gaze over it because something else, some other soft news has taken our gaze. This is a military coup. So you have... It's only been 30 days, too, that they, that we... It's uh, wild. Yeah. Holding people as body shields. I'm talking about the police are holding people as body shields. Um, their UN seat has been upended. That's sort of thrown up for, not for grabs, but that's something that's also politicized and become a dangerous thing. The Rohingya and their constant fleeing from the genocide. And this isn't speculation. This is documented. This is, yeah. And so just in terms of sometimes, I think it is important that we challenge our ethnocentrism, both in that we sometimes say things like God bless America, not God bless the world. And so because somehow that makes us unpatriotic to care about someone else who is beyond what is defined as our country. I suppose. Huh. I suppose. And but so we, everything that's yeah, important. I guess it depends on where you put the value of patriotism defined by whoever has defined it. Versus the value of humanity. humanity. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So just the push that we're talking about, the Jedi mind trick that has us thinking about, oh, we're going to get some more money. Oh, we're going to get free money. How are we going to spend this stimulus check? How are we going to spend this money? I am amazed of how many people are talking about a stimulus check Mm -hmm. and not of how many. Did you just cite to me earlier that just this in the past two weeks, how many more children have been detained? Yes. Yes, exactly. In the past two weeks, the number of children detained at the borders has tripled. Now, part of the story is that Biden is trying to undo what Trump did. And so in hopes that there may be a sort of less strict regulations on people coming into the country, Mm -hmm. more unaccompanied children are going to the borders. And the law is that you have to take them in. So people are understanding that. But I think we're still caught up in the celebration or the, the stupor, the lull. Of the Biden Kamala Harris win that we're not paying attention to numbers. We're not paying attention to the fact that they're still suffering, not to quell and take away the intensity of our need to celebrate. I think that that's great. But I think we need to take that energy and say, okay, so we've made it to this place of achieving what we consider to be a safer democracy. How are we going to use all the energy? Yeah, the stupor, the celebration kind of leads us to the stupor. Yeah. And we stay there. Yeah. And, and I remember many people during our author talk with Dr. Dyson, people were chiming in when he said, we don't have time to rest. There's no time for rest. And people were upset about that. Mm-hmm. And then you and I talk often about how being aware and how the work of activism, it does get tiring and you do want to shut it off. We're not talking about that mm-hmm. level of taking a break. We're talking about a total stupor yeah. that our entire tension and what consumes us whether it via social media or just what we're talking about in our communities, in our homes, in our boardrooms, has nothing to do with humanity. Yes. And the injustice and how we are still 
at certain places. That's the truth we're yeah. talking about. Yeah, that's the truth. Yep. How sometimes, you know, we are actually putting our heads back under the pillow. We are. Or we don't even think anything else is going on. Or it's not even important. How many times in our work when we've been out and people say, I'm just not into that. We've had people in our sessions who have shared with us when we've asked them questions as in, is there anything you are willing to die for? And they say, no. Can you see the value of my child as you see yours? Or can you love my child as much, if not more, as you love yours? And and people say, no, no, just mm-hmm. simply no. Yeah, this is not an attack. Mm-hmm. This is us. This is about exposure. Standing the truth, staying in our truth. And we all want to be so woke, this woke world that we're living in. Go on to your next story. Mm. Well, I just wanted to, you know, I think that you bring up the children in the, the detention centers. is a. It reminds me of the conversations we've had where people are kind of accusing us of being downers. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, oh my God. We came to your podcast to laugh. Yeah, you're not just the regular old Tasneem and Andrea. Yeah. The reality is and the truth is that we're all those things. Mm-hmm. And we, we laugh, we bring levity, but we stand in our truth of what is really going we on. We do. And we keep each other accountable, which we're asking our listeners to hold each other, hold ourselves accountable of what we're paying attention yep. to, what we're investing our time we in. Are. We're looking for whole human experience. That's it. And, okay, a whole human experience. If we had to just take a guess, how many posts... And let me let me just say, I know people are going to think that we're anti everything, anti establishment, anti social media, mm-hmm. anti everything. We're we're about humanity and truth. That's it. Mm-hmm. How many posts did we see with our favorite favorite new niece Amanda Gorman after her beautiful selection the day of the inauguration? I'm going to say my niece was in at least five million, hundred thousand. Okay, I'm sure. going to go with five million. Oh yes, yes I'm sure. going to go with five million posts. Yes. How many have we seen? Recently, about her telling her story about being followed by the police and sharing that. I'm going to say five. By six, seven? <laughs> six, is it seven, in, is maybe. It six or seven? Yeah. Six or seven. It was a little but bit But we're buried. not talking about that. And we're not talking about our favorite niece because we've claimed her, you see. We've made memes about her. She is our profile picture on our Facebook pages. Man, but who's we, not getting crochet braids because of a man? And I got a yellow suit I just or a yellow a, coat that I just ordered. Red headband. But right? we're oh, my I'm going to let you keep that. You gonna, <laughs> <laughs> on your ball. <laughs> but how many of us are talking about her being called a threat and the idea in her words is as she said in the sense you know i guess this police officer said that i am a threat i'm a threat to injustice mm. a threat to inequality a threat to ignorance yeah. and anyone who speaks the truth and walks with hope in an obvious and fatal danger to the powers that be is obviously a threat have we seen that quote? I haven't, but isn't Has it that one of been the most, tatted on anybody? Yet? Isn't it one of the most beautiful things? It's the most beautiful part. So we need to give equal value. We're going to celebrate, mm. but we can't celebrate that leads us to stupor. Mm-hmm. Whole human. Whole, whole human. Whole human. Whole experience. Yep. And so where do we, how do we condition ourselves to recognize the Jedi mind trick? What are you feeding? Some of the sources. You mentioned the times. Mm-hmm. We love the post. We love blavity. We do love Blavity. I love NPR.org. I, I, I dibble and dabble in a little CNN politics myself, Mr. Van. Shout out. I want to meet him one day. You got me turned on to undefeated.com. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Undefeated. Like yep. Undefeated. Locally. There are groups locally in yep. your neighborhoods that are doing the work that are keeping us aware yes. of what is going on so yes. that we can still both celebrate Amanda, mm-hmm. but we also are aware of what else is going yes. on. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I think, you know, shout outs to different groups that do a beautiful job with the Equity Alliance, of course. Yeah. We believe do a great job. Conexion Americas. Turk. You Turk know, my beloved Turk. Yeah. Um, Gideon's Army. Our brother Timothy Hughes with Black Voters Matters Fund and the Brothers Roundtable. Yes. There are tons of people who are doing the work. So we have no excuse to stay in the stupor, Tasmi. We are not staying in the stupor. So what's our question? We are asking our listeners... To think about and to share with us what distracts them and what do they feel they need to pay more attention to. If there is this intentional Jedi mind trick happening, but we are being seduced and lulled, you know, like Mowgli in the Jungle Book and the snake comes By your stimulus check. Yes, yes. <laughs> it just puts you to sleep so you don't think too hard. So what <laughs> things are we not paying attention to? Yeah. What things do we need to pay more attention to? But also what's distracting us? I love that. What is distracting us? Hmm. Sometimes a good beat. Sometimes fashion. Sometimes 
messiness. Oh, we're driven. I mean, reality shows came out. I mean, that's that's the reality. Real Housewives of, 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 of Davidson of, County. Of, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> We know it wouldn't because it would look like that show Nashville, which I never saw oh. until like I heard about like, yeah. they had one person of color on it. <laughs> and anyway, that was it for you. We that was it for Andrea. I was <laughs> so our question is, what distracts you and what do you need to pay more attention to? We're asking for some honesty here. Tell the truth. Tell your truth. As we're talking about ours, we don't know everything about everything, but we are interested in acknowledging what we don't know and what we feel we need to know in order to look at whole human experiences. And that's the truth. That is our truth, and we're standing in it. Yes, we are. Until next time. This is Truth Be Told. Oh,